What's going on everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA News and today we're keeping things right here in the Keystone State. Of course you guys know that I'm here in Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Today's guest is joining me via Zoom from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the city of brotherly love. I'm pleased to welcome Kyle Dacus to the program. Kyle is fighting number 14 ranked middleweight contender in the world, Kevin Holland at UFC Vegas 38 on October 2nd. So let's welcome in Kyle here. Kyle, man, how you doing? Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate the time. Hey, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, no problem at all. And uh, we'll get into things right now, start talking about this fight. And we'll start with your training camp. Just how's camp going as you uh, start to kind of wind some things down here? I know for the fight night's about, as the time of recording, it's like three weeks away. So just how are things going as you start to get to the final uh, leg of your training camp here? It's good. Um, it's, been a, it's been a tough, tough camp. Um, but it always is. Every camp is tough. So uh, just trying to improve on every single thing that I can. Um, you know, I watched the last fight that I, that I had and just try to improve on, on what I did wrong in that fight and also what I did correct, just try to get better at that. But uh, yeah, we're like three or so weeks away. I fly out on the 21st of September for my brother's fight. He fights the uh, actual week before me. Um, so I'm going to be in Vegas for two weeks. Um, but yeah, I just can't wait, can't wait to get in there on October 2nd. So who actually gets uh, more stress? Like you're saying with your brother's fight in the week before you there. Do you, do you get like more stress for his fight and he gets more stress for your fight than you guys do for your, for your own fights? Yeah, I, uh, I actually think I get more stressed out for my own fights than for his. But he gets stressed out for my fights. You, I can just tell. When we're in the locker room and I'm warming up and stuff like that, he's, he seems really nervous for my fights. But uh, yeah, I don't get too nervous for his fights because I know, like, I know the, the, the hard work that he puts in and then that he just has to go out there and, and perform. And now when you're out in Vegas for those two weeks, I'm going to assume you're probably going to take advantage of the UFC PI. I've never been there yet, but everybody keeps telling me I got to see it. What do you say? It's like an absolute state of the art facility. Have you gotten a train there yet? Or would this kind of be your, your first time seeing the PI? Yeah, no, every single time that we've gone out for fight week, we've trained there. Um, it's really, it's, it's a great facility. They, they literally have everything you want. Um, we just have to call up and, and schedule an appointment to, to go in there like an hour uh, workout window. So, yeah, I'm taking full advantage of that when I'm going to be out there for two weeks. Um, I'm going to be out there for my brother's uh, – I'm going to be training there for the week of my brother's fight, but also training in the hotel room at the, at the hotel that we'll be staying at. So kind of be double dipping in the hotel and then the PI. So now let's talk about Kevin a little bit here. So Kevin's obviously very well known in the MMA world. He's main event at fights, a uh, fan favorite from the way how he talks and everything else. Then there's you here. Now, you're a guy that might not be familiar to the, let's say, uh, casual fan like Kevin would be. So I guess how exactly did this fight come about? Because we're so used to see, seeing Kevin obviously in main events and whatnot. Just how exactly did you go about getting this fight? This is a huge fight for you and a huge opportunity getting a ranked guy like this. I can only imagine what it's going to do for you with the win here. Yeah, I uh, got a call from my manager. I forget when it was, but um, he had asked me like who, who were a couple of opponents that I actually like named that I wanted to fight because every time a UFC fight called before I was, before I was signed, I was like, I, I could beat this guy. I want to fight this guy. Just like tell my, tell my manager to see if he can kind of get me in there. Um, but yeah, uh, he called me and he was like, who were a couple of people that you asked to fight? I named off a couple of guys. I didn't name off Kevin, even though I asked that I, I wanted to fight Kevin. I, 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 had, I had told him prior that I wanted to fight him. Um, and he said, well, they offered you Kevin Holland. And I was like, I, I kind of thought it was a joke just because, you know, he's ranked number 14. Uh, I'm coming off of a loss, and you usually don't get a ranked guy coming off of a loss, but, you know, he's come, also coming off of two losses, uh, two main event losses, I believe. Um, so I think it's just kind of we're both on the losing end of it. Uh, so they just kind of wanted to put us together that way. And now let's just talk about Kevin, too, then as, uh, as an opponent and his skill set and what it's going to take to beat him on fight night. Yeah. He's a, he's, he's a very game opponent. Um, a lot of people, when I first got, like, notice of the fight, people were asking me, you know, how are you going to deal with the trash talk and all that stuff? But, like, in my opinion, he doesn't, like, talk trash during the fight. He just kind of – he's in the fight. You know, he's he's so focused in that he can talk and just rattle off stuff, whatever he wants to rattle off. Like, it's, ne it's never a bad thing, I don't really think. Um, I think he's always kind of nice in a way. Uh, but he, he loves fighting, you know. That's, that's how guys are. But uh, – yeah, he's a great opponent. It's a great matchup. I think it favors in my my end of the fight. Um, and yeah, I just I'm looking forward to it. So, 
So you're talking there, like where the way how he talks, and that it's not necessarily trash talk and whatnot, but it's still he's still going to be chirping in your ear. I, I have to just ask as a joke, really. Uh, do you like we see in like football, for example, where teams will play music through their stadiums, but they're practicing the music. Uh, crowd noise. Are you do anything like that? You play music while you're training, so you get used to like having this loud noise in your ear. Like, no, I I actually have my my coach has been running this math to me. Uh, Will Martinez has been running this math while we're training. Uh, it's always great because you know the guys at the gym they're always kind of talking smack. We're always you know smack talking back and forth. So it's we would usually put it on hold during the rounds, but now we're kind of doing it during the rounds just to get a feel of like just to see how I react, see how how they react and stuff like that. But. No, it's not going to bother me. Once we get into the fight, I'm going to be zoned in, and, and he can say whatever he wants, and it's not going to affect me. So we talked before about how this is such a big opportunity for you getting a ranked guy. Do you feel that if you get a win on fight night here that you're going to get a number next to your name now? Kind of one of those things, because like, he's 14, so you win, you kind of get that maybe 14, 15 spot, take his ranking maybe? Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I believe that's how it is. I think, my, you know, my brother beat um, Olenek uh, and... I think he woke up the next morning and he was number 10 and Olenek was number, Olenek was number 10. So, I mean, that can be a possibility. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I, I really think that's, that's how it's going to be. I really think when I go out there and, and, and get a finish that two guys in the top of the division couldn't do, then that's just going to prove that I, I need, a name, uh, need a number next to my name. So, um, I, I mean, I, I hope so. So, we've talked now about uh, Philly a little bit here in the intro here and – Obviously, we know Philly is very well known in the sports world. So many people obviously pay more, obviously more attention to bigger things like the Sixers and the Eagles mm. and uh, the Phillies and whatnot. But so many great fighters over the years there, right? We have you and your brother, Paul Felder, Eddie Alvarez, boxing so many of them throughout the years there. What is it about Philadelphia that you think gives you guys like this fighting edge that makes you guys so tough? Because we're so used to seeing so many great talented fighters from the, from the city of Philadelphia throughout the years here. I think it's just because it's a tough city. You know, it's a tough city to, to, to live in. Um, when you're growing up, you get in kind of fights here and there. Neighborhoods have, have rivalries and stuff like that. And I just think it's it's the way that we're, that we're brought up when we're younger. You know, we're, we don't really take crap from anybody. None of the Philly guys do. And, uh, I, I, of course, it causes problems because you always get into a fight about it. But I just think it's just because the city is so tough and, and – yeah, the city's it's it's called the city of brotherly love, but it's 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 really a tough city. I just said there's no love going on there in Philly, and anybody that's ever traveled through there no. can probably tell you that. Uh, so I do want to play a game with you here now, though. We were talking obviously there with how many great fighters uh, from Philly throughout the years here. So I'm going to give you some hints as to who the fighter might be, and you're going to guess as to who this popular fighter from Philadelphia is. So for this first one here. He was a heavyweight champ back in the day. He claimed Olympic gold in 1964. And he's, of course, famously known for having a victory over Muhammad Ali. They had three great trilogy fights, including the, uh, the Thriller in Manila. Who is this fighter? Uh, Joe Lewis. Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier. Ah, I knew it was Joe. There, my bad. It's all right. I knew where you were going with that one. We'll give you half credit, though, because I knew, I, yeah. I knew that you meant Joe Frazier, yeah. but you said Joe Lewis. That's okay. We'll give you ha half a credit for that one. This one, next one here, it's going to be a little tougher. Uh, he was born in Camden, New Jersey, and in case anybody's watching this, it's not too familiar geographically here. Camden's, like, right over the border. Like, as soon as you get over from Philly into Jersey, it's right there. So this fighter, he was born in Camden, New Jersey. He did his training in Philly. He actually trained at Joe Frazier's gym. And he's historically known for his height only being five foot five, but competing at the heavier weight classes, he claimed titles at light heavyweight and cruiserweight. He's fought guys like George Foreman, Evander Holyfield, Leon Spinks. Who is this Philadelphia fighter? Uh, it's boxing, obviously, right? <clears throat> Man, I don't know. I'm not too. I'm not too known of who the boxers are in Philly. Ah. I don't know. It was Dwight Muhammad Kwai. So uh, I know that one's kind of tough there for you. Um, right. Right. Since you're not good with the boxing ones, though, here, I'll, I'm going to skip over one boxing one for you. These, these next ones you should be able to get. There is another boxer on here, but he, he's a more modern right. boxer. I think you'll be able to get this one. Uh, this guy here, he learned how to box when he was in prison. He had a long career that just ended a few years ago. He claimed multiple world titles. Now he's actually working as a boxing analyst. Uh, another bonus here to maybe help you out. He actually, because of how he acted when he was in Philly, he actually went and moved into Delaware. Most people in Delaware until it was time for fight camp. Then he came into Philly. Uh, is it Bernard Hopkins? 
Bernard Hopkins, there you go, I got that one. All right, well now here's an MMA one, so you should be able to get this one. He's the only person ever to win titles in both Bellator and the UFC. This is Eddie Alvarez, right? Eddie Alvarez, you got it. And here we got the last one, and if you get this one wrong, you probably have problems. I'm pretty sure anybody in the world should get this one. He defeated Apollo Creed, Clubber Lang, and Ivan Drago, and they built a statue for him at the Philadelphia Arts Museum. Rocky. You got it. All right. So not too bad there. See, we started off a little slow, but you got it at the end. Yeah, it, the, the beginning was a little rough, but we got through it. <laughs> And it, I mean, it, it is fair that you're, you're in the MMA world, a lot of those guys are in the boxing world, so it is a little tough, uh, I guess, uh, to, to get those there, being that they're two different sports in a way. But uh, I guess I'll ask you, though, this question, being that there's been so many great Philadelphia boxers, and I know there's so many to keep track of over the years. Do you ever, like, go to any of these um, different places? Because I know Philadelphia still is a big boxing area. Do you ever go to any areas in Philly, work on boxing or anything like that? Uh, no, not really. Once I, when I actually started out training... Um, I went to uh, Jack Costello's gym, which is like a local gym, like near my own, near my old neighborhood. Um, that's about it. You know, I wasn't really like known of any boxers or, or big boxing names. I wasn't really like, I never really watched boxing. I do now. Um, but back then I didn't really watch boxing, but Jack Costello's is the only gym that I've been to in Philly of, uh, boxing gyms in Philly. So. I gotcha. All right. Well, we had a lot of fun here. We covered a lot of ground here talking with the fight. Obviously, that was a fun game there, naming the, the fighters there in Philly. Uh, before you were all out here today, though, uh, social media, management, sponsors, anybody that you want to give a shout out to that you haven't done so yet, please feel free to do so. Uh, just everybody I've been training with, uh, all the heavyweights out of there. I'm really thankful for everybody that's, that's really been helping me, you know, from the very beginning. Uh, my MMA news has always been there interviewing me for everything. So I'm very thankful for you guys. Um, G Fuel has just sent me a care package, so I'm very thankful for the G Fuel. Um, you can check out my social media. I'm on, I'm on Twitter. It's just Kyle Dawkus. Uh, my Instagram is just Kyle underscore Dawkus. And uh, I just started the Twitch stream, so I'm now streaming, like, gaming and stuff like that. And that's, that's just uh, K Dawkus. So I usually share stuff on Twitter and everything like that. So if you want to check that out, I'm on Twitter. I'll share it when I'm live. Um, but, yeah, and everybody at the gym. I'm very thankful for everybody at the gym. All right, guys, there you have it. That was Kyle Dawkins. Again, he fights the number 14-ranked middleweight contender in the world, Kevin Holland at UFC Vegas 38 on October 2nd. So make sure you guys check that out, and make sure you guys also check out the subscribe button at the bottom if you haven't done so yet. I appreciate everyone that subscribes to this YouTube channel, and whenever you subscribe, you'll be able to get notified whenever I have more interviews that come out, just like this great one we just did here with Kyle today. So make sure you guys check that out and make sure you check out my main news every single day of the week. There's great content coming out there all the time. And as always, we appreciate it. We'll see you later, everybody.